There was a long period of time where I just felt like I didn't really belong in the real world. Nobody was sliding into my DMs, no one was adding me on Snapchat. And even when I was talking to people, it felt like they were just waiting for a break in the conversation so that they could leave and go do something else. If you can relate to any of those feelings or situations, then this guide will help you learn the basics of beginner social skills so you can start leveling up IRL. So why should you listen to anything that I have to say? Because I'm in the process of leveling up myself. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert. I don't have a skill cape on my back. But as someone who's always had trouble connecting with others, these are the things that have helped me form better relationships with other people. So, part one, be attractive. Listen, I'm here to tell you what you need to hear, not what you wanna hear. So if you can't handle this first step, then I'm sorry, but this is not the video for you. But if you can listen to what I have to say and internalize it, then I promise you, you'll be on the right path moving forward. Now I'm gonna be telling you things that you could do right now, literally right now, to be more attractive and to put less people off. So the first thing is dental hygiene. If you're not brushing and flossing your teeth on a regular basis, you need to start. Nobody wants to talk to someone who has bad breath. Would you hold a conversation with someone if you can't even stand their hot breath? So don't be that person. Make sure you use mouthwash, or if you go out and you didn't have mouthwash before, chew some gum. Make yourself pleasant to talk to. Second thing, body hygiene. Don't be a smash player. Take showers. I don't understand why I need to say this, but no one wants to get close to you if they can't handle the scent coming off your body. Use soap and hot water. And then after you take a shower, make sure you put lotion on your skin. When people touch you, it shouldn't feel like you have scales. That's disgusting. All right, don't be that person. When you go out, you should either wear cologne or deodorant. I've literally had people approach me and tell me that I smell nice. This is so easy to do. The next thing is make sure you groom yourself. You can have like kind of messy hair, that's a whole look, but make sure it looks intentional. There's a difference between messy and raggedy. All right, don't cross that line. Make sure you clip your fingernails, make sure you clip your toenails, make sure you trim your, your nose hair if you have nose hair, ear hair, if you have a lot of body hair, maybe trim that down. The more you take care of your physical appearance, the more confident you'll be about your physical appearance and the more confident that you'll be when you interact with other people. These are simple, simple things that anyone can do right now. There's just no reason not to. The next thing for being more attractive is adopting some basic style. When I was in high school and college and I was broke, I bought all of my new clothes at Goodwill. I recommend this for anyone and everyone. Even if you can afford not to go to Goodwill, go to Goodwill because guess what'll happen? You go to the store and you get to try on all kinds of different clothes, all kinds of different fits. And when I say fits, I don't just mean different like outfits. I mean how different clothes fit on your body. You get to figure out, am I a small, medium, or large? Am I a 34 waist, a 32 waist, a 30 waist? What kind of shirts do I like? What kind of jackets do I like? What kind of pants do I like? There's so much variety that you you'll end up discovering different styles and different types of clothing that you would have never found otherwise. So go to Goodwill, have an open mind, and just try things. If you don't like it, you don't need to keep it. But it's worth investing into your style so that you can at least figure out what you like and what looks good on you, and you can go from there. So part two, remember people's names. Now stay with me here, stay with me here. Names are the most important part of building trust and lasting friendships, and let me tell you why. Names are sacred. People hold their names in the highest regard. Think about the fact that when you're in a crowd of people and there's people talking all around you, somebody says your name and your ears perk up. You hear your name being called despite being in the middle of a dense crowd. Think about how powerful that is. Your name will elicit an emotional reaction in you. When people that we like who are in like a higher social setting than we are, or even like our crush, if they walk up to you and call you by name, Think about how good that makes you feel. You're not just some guy. You have a name and they're acknowledging you by that name. Now, I know what you're saying. I'm terrible with names, terrible with names. So how do I start to do this? One thing I'll say is when you meet someone for the first time, give them your name first and then ask them for their name. If someone introduces themselves first, not only do you have to remember their name, but now you also have to think about how you're gonna respond to what they're saying to you. When you give your name first, you're in the clear from that. All you need to do is listen to what they're saying. So let's say I'm talking to someone named Mary. I'd go up to Mary and I'd say, Hey, what's up? My name's Mike. I just saw you in the area. You know, I've seen you here a couple times. What's your name? Mary would say, Oh yeah, my name's Mary. Now in order to imprint that into my head, Nice to meet you, Mary. So Mary, what brings you here? Two sentences, said her name two times. 
Simple stuff like that. It doesn't have to be a whole big thing. Don't make it weird. Just try to get in the habit of saying their name at least two times because I promise you, as you hold their eye contact and as you say their name, that correlation will be made. In the very worst case scenario, if you forget someone's name, it's not the end of the world to just go up to them and say, hey, you know, I, I apologize. I completely forgot your name. Can you just remind me what your name is? Most people, if they're decent people, they won't have any issue with doing that. And most of the time they would have forgotten your name as well. So then you can say, oh yeah, Mary, sorry, my name is Mike. Nice to meet you again. So part three is that you need to learn how to make small talk. Now I already know what you're saying. Oh, I hate small talk. It's so superficial, so surface level. I don't want to have small talk. I just want to get into a deeper conversation with people. I used to be just like you, but this is a terrible mindset to have because small talk is a barrier to entry. If you can't prove that you're capable of holding like simple, basic, just daily conversation, you're gonna come off as a weirdo. Another huge, huge benefit of small talk is that you can really start to learn what people's values, morals, and principles are. And once you know these things, you can use those talking points to have deeper conversations. But you'll be able to have those deeper conversations because you've already warmed them up with some basic small talk. It's like a free trial to potential friendship. Part four is understanding that everyone is the main character in their own life. Nobody cares about what you have going on in your life. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Think about it this way. How many days a week do you spend with yourself? How many hours in a day do you spend in your own skin? You know yourself better than anyone. But once you understand that everybody else feels this way and everyone is inherently selfish and that them being selfish isn't a negative thing, then you can start to understand how other people think and you can start to use this to your advantage. So I want you to imagine this situation. You just level up a new skill, unlocked a perk, completed a side quest in your own life. You're excited about that. You're just waiting for someone to ask you about it, but nobody does. What if you were that one person who got the other person to open up about all these things that they're excited about that just nobody seemed to care about? Imagine how important you would be in their mind. Imagine how happy you would make them. Why don't you do that? Imagine that everybody around you is just feeling that eagerness and excitement that they just wanna share the best moments of their life with you and then be the person that they can share that with. Remember that they're the main character. So just be the friend that you would want in your storyline. If you do the opposite and you view other people in your life as just NPCs to feed you information and side quests, you're gonna have a really hard time connecting with people. Why? Because contrary to your own limiting beliefs, people aren't stupid. They'll find out pretty quickly that you're just using them as a checkpoint to get to the next point in your life. So don't be that person. Part five, be an active listener. If you're anything like me, which you probably are, let's be honest, you don't really care about other people because you're so absorbed by yourself. You're the most important person in your life. So why should you take the time to hear about what other people are doing? You need to get over this feeling. We've already established that everyone is the main character in their own lives. So you need to take a genuine interest in the lives of others. So how do you do that? Are you familiar with the flow state? It's when your mind removes all external factors. All external thoughts are completely wiped away. The flow state is essentially ultra instinct, but in real life. You're in this state of just calmness and you can focus intently on a single task. There's this skill, right? It's a hidden skill. It's called active listening and active listening is like the equivalent of entering a flow state with another human being. Think about how powerful that is. Literally overpowered. I want you to get in the habit of just stopping your thoughts when you enter a conversation with somebody else. Stop thinking about the show that you want to watch later or the game that you want to play. Be present with that person in that very moment. Listen to their words. Feel what they're feeling. Internalize what they have to say to you and then respond openly and honestly based off of what you feel from them. By practicing active listening, you can turn a one-sided conversation into a skill that you can practice and level up just like any other. Part six, be happy to see other people. Happiness is infectious. Don't be like Sasuke. Don't be that person who looks indifferent or upset to see other people. Your parents did this to you when you were growing up. You know exactly how hurtful it can be. You know how deeply it hurts you to be treated like an inconvenience. Don't be that person. 
Instead, be the person that greets other people with a smile, with a wave, with a hug, with a fist bump, whatever people are comfortable with. By making this a habit, people will start to naturally be happy just at the sight of you. And that's when you start to notice that you'll be able to make friends a lot easier. So part seven, it's time to start putting all this together. I want you to understand something. You're a noob. You're essentially level one right now and you have a long way to go. But I promise you that if you take these skills and you really put them into practice, you'll start to slowly level up and you'll start to see the progress in real life. Stop comparing yourself to people who already have 99 skill capes. Stop comparing yourself to people who are on the top leaderboards. You're just getting started. Take things at your own pace and compare yourself with yourself and nobody else. I also want you to keep in mind though, you have access to the exact same resources that they do. So if you see someone doing something, know that you can do it too. It's possible. You just need to level up first. So don't give up. It'll just take some time. As a thanks for getting this far into the video, I wanna give you a bonus tip because I really do appreciate the fact that you've watched so far into it. Now this tip is essentially a hack. It's, it's like a double XP weekend. It's gonna absolutely boost the rate at which you level up your social skills. So listen carefully. And this bonus tip is to use social media. Now I know this is gonna be controversial. I know everyone talks about how toxic social media can be, but if you use social media as a tool instead of being used by social media, it can be extremely helpful. And let me tell you how. When you add someone on social media, basically their entire personality in your hand. Think about how powerful that is. If you're like me and you're trash with names, I'll look up their social media profile before I go and approach them and then I can approach them confidently by name. It really just makes everything so much easier. Keep in mind that most people on social media will only post the highlights of what they're doing and use that to your advantage. If you post something that you're proud of, think about what would make you feel good and just take those words and put it towards somebody else. You need to learn how to give before you receive and you can practice that on social media. So just remember this, Social media is like the equivalent of an IRL friends list with a built-in leaderboard. You get to see what skills people are leveling up. You get to see what kind of quests and side quests everyone's on. Better yet, you can easily just swipe up on a post and give someone some encouragement. It's powerful. So in summary, step one is to be attractive. Being attractive makes it much easier for other people to accept your friend requests. Nobody wants to hang out with someone who makes them feel uncomfortable. And the easiest way to make someone feel uncomfortable is to be physically repulsive. Or in other words, if you rank in Bronze League, you're going to be playing with other Bronze players. Part 2. Remember people's names. Remember that our names are one of the first sounds that we hear when we're born. It's one of the things in our lives that remain constant. They play a key role in our development and lives and they make us feel unique. There's only one Zazima. By calling people by their names, you'll find that people are a lot more attentive to you and you'll find that you're able to interact much more confidently with people because you know their names as well. Step three is to learn how to make small talk. Small talk is the very first barrier to entry after you get to know somebody's name. Look at small talk as like flavor text on somebody's profile page. It helps you to identify who they are and what it is that they care about and can be used as a segue into more interesting conversations. Part four is that everyone is the main character in their own lives. Most people don't really care about you or what you have going on. You're just an NPC in their lives. Ask people about their own lives, their interests, their wants, their needs, their desires, and you'll find that they'll just do all the talking for you. Be the voiceless main character that just selects simple dialogue options from the chat box and let the other NPCs just spill exposition at you. You might even pick up a side quest or two along the way. Part five is to be an active listener. While you're talking to other people, try to enter that flow state with them. Listen attentively to their words and try to find the meaning behind them. Feel the excitement that they feel and respond to them from their point of view. As you level up this skill more, it'll become much more natural. I promise you, you will see ridiculous progress with this. Step six is to be happy to see people. Think about dogs. Everyone loves dogs, right? Why does everyone love dogs? When you've had a rough day and you come home, who is on the other side of the door just happy to see you, acting as if the world would have ended if you never came home? That's enough to get anyone in a good mood. And then finally, part seven, put everything together and start using it IRL. You now know all the different basic skills that I learned and started to implement into my own life. Be patient with yourself. 
You don't jump straight from level 3 to 99 by chopping one tree in Tutorial Island. And of course, a special thanks to you for watching all the way to the end. I hope you have a good night, and until next time.